everybody, this is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation and the glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be doing another glory story tonight. I'm logging on a few minutes early um, before Madeline jumps on here and just wanted to say hey to everybody. And as you log in, just type in where you're logging in from. I just, I'm so excited to be talking about the Holy Spirit tonight because I just love Him. And I think that's one of the questions that people ask the most is, or want to know more about is to have understanding about the Holy Spirit. So I just want to pray over you guys as I give a few minutes for Madeline to log in. Hey mom, love you. I just love what God is doing in my mother's life and how much she's growing and reading. Hey Jody, how are you? Hey Angie, how are you? Just log into the broadcast. I'm Madeline from Virginia. Hey everybody. Just share the broadcast. Hey, Angie. How Hello. Hey. This camera. <laughs> we got time. I'm just telling everybody to share. I'll introduce Madeline in just a second. Let her get situated. Hey, Sandra. And then. Hey, it's always Christina. different when you how switch you? it. <laughs> That's right. I know. Remember last time we were we were backwards. <laughs> yeah. So I was trying to. So we didn't have to have that. <laughs> Hey, Taryn, how are you? I'm going to introduce Madeline in just a second. I'm so excited of what Holy Spirit's going to do tonight. As you're mm-hmm. logging in, just share the broadcast. Tell us where you're logging in from. We're just going to follow Holy Spirit tonight. We may prophesy. We may call out words of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Just whatever Holy Spirit wants to do, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to try to put my headphones on while you guys are sharing and see if they're going to work tonight. Sometimes they like to be on. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Amen. The good old technical stuff. Just share the broadcast. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to talk about. Let's see if everybody can hear me good. Can you hear me good, Madeline? Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. (laughs) Loud and clear. Sometimes I have to turn the volume down. So just give me just a second, Mm -hmm. guys. I know I'm messing with it. Sometimes it just sounds too loud. I don't want to drown you guys out. Hey, Angel, how are you? All right, a few more minutes. I'm going to introduce Madeline, and then we're just going to get into it. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? Hey, Hal, how are you? <laughs> Isn't it an exciting subject to talk about, Madeline? Yeah, it's all, it's so Holy Spirit is always a good topic. <laughs> I, I know. I just love him so much. Oh, mm-hmm. He's like the best friend, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jody. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I think people are still logging in. Hey Jennifer, how are you? A lot of people we know and love are logging on, or friends, or or family. Amen. I can't Amen. see anybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, bless your heart. You want to take a minute to share? Share. Oh, on my. Well, on your, I, I need to go get my iPad. I can. I can. Yeah. They'll. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah. We got time. Everybody's logging in. Hey, great to share. We're going to dive in in just a second. We're just getting situated. I just want to give people the most opportunity. But I want to pray over everybody logging in right now because I just want to bind distraction tonight because I want to invite Holy Spirit because I just love him. I just honor him. And I'm so excited. He wants us to teach on the relationship with the Holy Spirit because he just means so much to me. And once you get these keys to help you um, just get to know who Holy Spirit is, um, I I think it's just going to be, I'm just going to pray for such a revelation to come on your life. So, Lord, I just declare that I just bind any distractions right now. I just release the glory. Oh, thanks, Taryn. I just release the glory over everybody watching. I just declare that you're going to have a revelation on how to cultivate the Cultivate the relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Lord, that that you're going to have revelation on who the Holy Spirit is, even as I interview Madeline. And I just release your presence to just take away all the distractions. Just 
do a prophetic act and just cut off the noise of the day. Just take a take your hand and cut it over your head and just say, Holy Spirit, that's right. We all got to do that, right? Just Holy Spirit, have your way. I just invite Holy Spirit right now. I just love you, Holy Spirit. This was your idea. This was your broadcast. So we just say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Whatever you want to do, it's dedicated to you. Whoa. We just dedicate it to you. We honor you. We thank you for being the third part of the Godhead. And you're so awesome. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, now I get to introduce Prophet Madeline James. I've had her on the air before. I'm so excited that she's back. And hey, she's hey. so much more than a prophet. She's a revelatory scribe. She's an author. She has her new podcast. She's teaching. Mm -hmm. She's an itinerant prophet now. So you just have multiple hats. But most of all, you're, you're one of my friends that I love so dearly. So I was so excited that the Holy Spirit wanted me to have you on to talk about Holy Spirit. Amen. It's an honor to be on here. I love talking about the glory and Holy Spirit. And Amen. It's always more fun to do with your friends. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And that spirit of unity. But uh, I know we'll get into the glory and uh, talk about some of your recent glory stories. I know you've seen some amazing miracles and some different things that take place. So let's mm -hmm. talk about the glory for a little bit. And then we're going to sure. dive in to the, about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I really um, believe, I, I had commented yesterday on Facebook, I really believe this is a season of dreams. God's yeah. really, um, I don't know about you, but my dream realm yeah. the last like two weeks has been super active and like, Amen. crazy, like heavy dreams too. And, and I really believe, um, you know, you can get impartation from dreams. Come on, I'm sorry to turn my volume up. The other day where um, I got imparted to, I got prayed over a certain type of anointing. And I woke amen. up with it. I was drunk in the spirit for most of the day. And so, That's the best kind of dream, right? Amen. And so <laughs> I really believe the Lord, he's imparting in this season as we go into a new season. We go into 2020. And wow. to really pay attention to your dreams. Um, because God wants to take you to new places. He wants to um, teach you how to work with the angelic mm. more. Um, Come on. He's showing alignments in this season, new alignments that are coming, and he's going to begin to show you the metron or your jurisdiction or, or your reach in this Come coming on. season. So pay attention to your dreams. Write them down. Amen. I can, even, mm -hmm. I can even attest to things that you've said. I've had alignment yeah. dreams just in the past week, and just like you said, mm -hmm. there's been a, such an increase. Yeah, yeah. Um, like every so, night. <laughs> so. Yeah, amen. We say more, Lord, right? Yes, yes. So just pray for the people watching. If, if mm -hmm. they, so I have viewers from all walks of life and all denominations, mm -hmm. and you know, we'll, we'll release the invitation to accept Jesus as they're listening to this. But amen. just share like maybe five minutes on dreams because I know you're a heavy dreamer mm -hmm. like me, and, and mm -hmm. just touch face at how many times God has spoken to you about mm -hmm. dreams. Yeah, a lot of times, really, I was a dreamer um, since I was a little girl, as far back as I can remember. And uh, but I didn't really realize the the impact or how powerful they were. I just oh, I had a prophet, you know, a dream. You know, I knew about the prophetic. I didn't really know about prophet yet. Um, but a lot of times, you know, we dream dreams because that's God's language. You know, it's the dream realm. That's Holy Spirit's language. You know, Joel said that He's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Come on. Dream, dream, you know, and, and dream visions in that. And so that's God's mm -hmm. language. And you see all throughout the Bible that, you know, God spoke to his people. It was a part of their culture. And if you Come weren't on. dreaming, you know, there's something wrong. <laughs> but, um, but that's how, how God speaks. And we have to um, not be afraid that this is like a new, I don't know why I'm going here, but this is not a new age thing. That Amen. Is Come God's on. Realm. And, Come on. You know, this is the I love it. So we need to take it back. So for whoever that's for. Um, but pay attention to your dreams because God is oftentimes speaking to us. Um, but we need to we need to find out our language because God has the dream language for you. You know, there's Come on. symbols and and different things um, that you know, like a dog. Um, so April might be friendly, but to me, I'm not. You know, I have a dog, but dogs are okay. I'm more of a cat person. There so you go. a cat would mean something, you know, instead of a negative, it would mean something positive, you know, to me. And so just as you learn to steward your dreams, you know, write them down, mm -hmm. you know, journal them, because God wants to see that you're a good steward of Come the on. vision, because the more that you steward your dreams, your visions, the more that God's going to give them to you, because he's going to see that you honor um, the way Come that on. he speaks to you. And so honor opens the realm to more. Come on. 
And so, but this is the hour, you know, more than ever that God, he's, he's speaking in dreams because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're so busy throughout the day or, you know, Come our on. that God has That's to speak true. to us in the night seasons. But, um, you know, dreams are amazing. You can go places in the spirit. You can be translated. You can Come on. have face-to-face encounter. You can hang out Come with on. the angelic. You know, it's fun. <laughs> hey, man, I'm like you. you know? I, I love the dream mm-hmm. realm. I've, I've had deliverance mm-hmm. in dreams. Yeah, I've had me too. Mm-hmm. Inner healing in dreams. Mm-hmm. I've had mm-hmm. impartation. So, right. um, and, and if you're on here and you dream a lot, like three or four times a night, you may be mm-hmm. a seer. It's like one of the mm-hmm. rain realms that God really speaks to seers in. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that's you, you know, just, just start asking the Lord. Um, I know many people on here are asking for increase, Madeline. So I'll let you pray that one in. But uh, mm-hmm. as you do that, I see somebody on here like night terrors. So if you want to mm-hmm. break that, either way, we can do it together mm-hmm. or however you want to flow. But I see mm-hmm. the enemy has tried to steal some dreams because, you know, it's a violation. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, a lot of times the enemy, especially for seers or those who Come really on. dream vision, you know, the enemy wants to um, instill fear. And I remember reading something that Doug Addison uh, wrote when I was, you know, beginning to learn more about dreams. But oftentimes... Um, you know, we need to ask the Lord, you know, what's beyond that, that wall Come of fear? Because that's Come where on. the enemy, that's where the enemy's stopping you. Because that's where the enemy wants to stop you. Because, you know, if you get beyond that, then you're going to see what God really wanted to do. You're going to see who, who God's really calling you to be. And Come so a lot on. of times, you know, the enemy will attack you. He's attacking me. I've had, you know, severe demonic, you know, dreams before. But it's just, it's intimidation. Come on. Uh, because, you know, dreams are powerful. You can get a lot done in the realm of the spirit in your dreams. And God will begin to show, you know, his prophets, um, his friends, you know, secrets, you know, how to pray. And so the enemy doesn't mm-hmm. like that. He doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but God wants to set you free. You know, you don't have to be tormented. You don't have to have a bad taste in your mouth. Come you know, and a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know, when we do have demonic, you know, every month, it's, you know, every once in a while is okay. Yeah, to have a demonic dream, so to speak. But if we're having them all the time, then a lot of times there's open doors and it's Come on. stuff that you know we've not dealt with, and so we need yeah. some inner healing and deliverance to shut those doors because Come sometimes on. we don't realize the access that um, that we're giving the enemy. Whether we have good intentions, sometimes we just got stuff, and so Amen. you know, our enemy's looking for an open door, and so we have to learn how to close those. Amen. I can attest to that. I love the puzzle pieces because God always reveals. Mm Because he always reveals to heal. Amen. So Mm -hmm. I love that about him. And Mm -hmm. I like to say it's like 2020. Because when you're asleep, you're getting the night visions. And when you're awake, you get the day. I love Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every hidden thing, right? Right. Amen. Every hidden thing. (laughs) (laughs) So I'll let uh, Madeline just pray since she's sharing about dreams and just impart to you guys. And Mm -hmm. just keep me updated. I just get updates, you know, about if you have a breakthrough after this broadcast in the area of dreams, just email um, me that it's under the glory stories. It'll be posted. Just email glory stories and just share it with me and Madeline because we want to see the fruit of what Holy Spirit has us to, to share about. So go for it, mm-hmm. Madeline. I know some people have been kind of in a season where dreams have been, I uh, have testimony. I was talking um, with a friend that I've been pouring into and she had, mm-hmm. um, she mm-hmm. was just frustrated because she's a big dreamer too. She's an intercessor, prophet. Come on. And, you know, for dreamers, seers, mm-hmm. if you're not dreaming or seeing, you're like, what's up? You know, I'm, I yep. can't see what's God, you know, God saying. It's frustrating. But, you know, sometimes God, too, will take you through seasons where he's kind of quiet. And that's just an invitation to go deeper. Because we, we want to make sure that um, that we don't get infatuated or get, um, you know, fall in love with the dream and not the, the on. one that gives the dreams, you know. And so God will give us an invitation, you know, for more. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember I prayed with her. And I just declared, you know, that night she was going to have a dream Next morning, she texted me. She hadn't dreamed in maybe over a month, I believe, or so. And that night, yeah. she had a dream that morning. Come on. Come, I love so, it. So, let me pray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Father, thank I just you, Jesus. Uh, thank you for those on this broadcast. Father, I just release you, that Jesus. breaker anointing um, to break thank the you, warfare, Jesus. to break the witchcraft um, over those Come who on. are struggling um, in their thank night season. You. Father, over their dreams, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Um, God, we just expose that assignment right now. God, every uh, word you, curse Jesus. being spoken, Father. Lord, I speak clarity over their vision, God, over their night season, God, where there's uh, some of you are just really cloudy in the spirit. And so, Father, I just remove um, that veil right now. 
Come in the on. name of Jesus and Father, I just declare um, clarity over their vision, um, clarity you, over dreams. Even some of you are going to begin to experience trances. And Father, I just uh, release that, that mm. realm to them. Father, I just declare an increase mm. in this season, Father. Um, yes. Not one-dimensional dreams, Father, but multi-dimensional, Father. And, and even um, in the impact, Father, the anointing that you're wanting to release over them, Father, because you've called us mm. to, to be dreamers, God. You've called us to interact in that realm. And so, Father, I pray that you would break any fear of that as well, Father. Whoever's struggling with that fear, yeah, um, whatever lie I get that they've been told um, about that dream realm, Father, I break it. Father, I pray that you just encounter yeah. that person, Holy Spirit, that you would come and just speak truth to that person. And, Father, I break uh, night terrors, Father, I break um, demonic yeah. assignments, over mm. dreams, Father, we just declare um, perfect love casts out all fear. Come on. And God, I pray that you would show them um, open doors that may be leading um, the enemy to attack them in that way. But, Father, we shut mm. all doors. We plead the blood of Jesus over Come them, on. Father. And, Lord, we mm. just declare um, from this day for God, that this mm. demonic assignment, these night terrors are stopping. And, Father, I just pray deliverance mm. over them, Father. Even now, as they're sitting here, God, they would receive it. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Amen. And I just declare generational breakthrough, God, even in mm -hmm. dreams, that you will unlock generational blessings and unlock and unlock any hindrances in a generational bloodline. I just declare mm -hmm. decree they will have great bloodline breakthrough Whoa, mm -hmm. in the area of their dreams. Mm -hmm. Sandra is mm -hmm. asking a question. Abigail is asking, do all seers have dreams? I would say just like um, with any, pro you know, a prophet can either, hear, you know, there's mul multiple streams. Amen. Um, I would say, like April, I would say would be more visionary. I mean, I know you dream a lot, but you seem to have more of the open vision stuff. I would say I'm more of a dreamer. I mean, I do have more inner vision, but I don't necessarily have the panoramic. Um, so it just kind of depends what you Everybody's focus different. on. Everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. But you I can agree. always ask God to, you know, stretch you. Amen. Yeah, so if Abigail wants dreams, we just declare she's going to have more dreams. I think Amen. just like Madeline said, that every seer is different. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. You know, it, it, right. just, it, it just depends on how God's speaking at that time, right? And he switches right. it up, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I have, there'll be seasons where I'll have three or four dreams a night, and then there'll be right. seasons where I'll have one, and then there'll be seasons where I have two. It just, right. it's like, yeah, yeah, whatever Holy Spirit wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, how would some, how would, just because Holy Spirit's letting me camp here for a minute, one of the questions would, how would one decipher between a nightmare and a warning dream? Hmm. Well, God, um, God's not fear. God's not Come a spirit on. of fear. Come on. And so usually, you know, when the enemy comes, you know, you feel a certain terror. And when Come it's on. a warning dream, um, you kind of have like a fear of the Lord. You have like a like mm -hmm. a sense of urgency. Like I just released um, a dream about President Trump, the United States, and when I woke mm -hmm. up, I felt like it was a warning to pray. You know, right now Come it's a strategic time, or or even when you have like dreams about earthquakes or just stuff happening. Like you just have a um, mm -hmm. it's an urgency. It's not a fear, but yeah. a fear of the Lord. Come but on. you have an urgency. You're, you're not um, paralyzed by fear. Yeah, yeah, and there's been times where, this is where, like what Madeline said, where you have to know your own dream language. A lot right. of my warning dreams will come two or three days in advance. Right. So that's just how God operates with me. Well, he can switch that anytime he wants to, but most of the time I see that my warning dreams come that way. And there has been very specific warning dreams that I've gotten about family members like it was specific to a car wreck or specific to that. And I would wake up, pray, and break it, and immediately, and nothing ever happened. And that's happened mm -hmm. to me multiple times so it's kind of like an intercessor slash right. warning dream you know mm -hmm. role of just protecting my family because i'm very protective by nature <laughs> you know <laughs> some of us <laughs> don't mess with my friends and family right we all <laughs> love to to be loyal and love each other um somebody said my 16 year old refuses to try because he is continually dreaming that she is in a car crash i've been praying about it but was curious on your thoughts um, I That's think, funny. obviously, um, a door was open somewhere, mm -hmm. either something she, um, she watched, or even like a movie or something, or maybe mm -hmm. a friend got in a car accident or somebody close, and so, um, you know, she needs to repent and come out of agreement, you come know, on. with that lie, and just speak, you know, God's truth, and um, to there's some type of trauma that's come in, or fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. Say. 
Amen. So mm -hmm. anything to do with that car crash, we just mm -hmm. say um, it came off my screen. I was trying to, mm -hmm. and Angel, you can always put your, it's an older child, so you can always just have, uh, mm -hmm. just curse any roots of trauma or stress. Just mm -hmm. have your uh, adult children, you know, I lead my kids in all type of prayers because you never know, you know, what could be considered a trauma to one kid would not be another kid. So right. you can just say, you know, whatever trauma you just commanded off the cellular memory that has to do with driving and curse mm -hmm. it at its root. Right. And get that root out of there. Mm -hmm. So I'll see if we have any more questions about dreams and then Green, we'll move uh, on. I kind of sense there may be like even to cancel a spirit of death. You know? Come on, do it. Yeah. And so, Go Father, we just come right now. We just uh, leave the blood of Jesus over uh, Angel and her family and her children and her husband, Father, yeah. and their ministry. Father, we break. Um, God, we just ask that you just expose the root, God, where this has come in and over her daughter. Come on. Father, we break um, the spirit of death that would try to come. Or and premature attack her, death. Yeah, premature death. And Father, we just speak peace. We speak um, love over her perfect love. Cast that all Come fear. On. And Father, we just pray that you give Angel wisdom and, uh, yeah. and even a dream about I got it and what to do. And we just break any generational curse of premature death that could be going up and down the bloodline. We, we repent and cut the core of that iniquity wherever that came in. Woo! We command that bloodline to be set free and never to be back in. Off. DNA in Jesus name mm -hmm. thank you Lord thank you Lord mm -hmm. all right so we talked about dreams and we're <laughs> going to get into the Holy Spirit in just a few minutes but any other glory story uh, I know you've been traveling and doing different things and writing and had different encounters is there anything mm -hmm. since you've been on last that the Lord has really highlighted a different realm of glory that You've been seeing miraculous in whatever you feel like Holy Spirit wants you to, mm -hmm. to point out. Go for it. Well, I notice, um, you know, the glory isn't just for the people up on the stage. You know, it's Come really, on. Um, it's really about, you know, relationship. I noticed, um, you know, even as I've come in, coming into a new season, as a lot of people have commented, um, you look like you're shining or um, you look like this. Or I've noticed kind of my signature lately as I've been carrying glory dust. And so I've gotten up from chairs and stuff, and there's, Come on. you know, glory dust or people. And so it's really, um, so just learning how to carry, you know, the glory mm -hmm. and the signs and wonders and really press and don't get satisfied. Um, and just the encounters, you know, seem to be getting stronger. And, um, you know, you don't have to strive. And you don't Come have on. To, to make it work. And it's about, you know, relationship yeah. and, um, you know, I've been uh, preaching a word about Isaiah 52 about, you know, it's time to rise up to shake off the dust. Come on. And, and in the Passion Translation, it says to um, put on your majestic strength and put on your glory garments. <laughs> Amen. I love that. I love that language. That's so beautiful. True. You know, like Amen. We, we have glory garments, and really that's, that's putting on Him. Come on. Because, you know, there's, we need to make the exchange, you know, the spirit of heaviness. Come on. You know, and put on those garments of praise, put on those glory garments. And really, it's, you know, who we are in Christ Ooh. and who, who He's created us to be because we were made in glory. You know, Come that on. got restored when Jesus, you know, died on the cross for us. So we, we are, we can, you know, we don't have to be afraid to shine. And so this Come part, on. too, that God has given uh, me in this season for the body, too, that you have permission mm -hmm. to shine. You have permission to do what it is that's in your heart. Um but, you know, even in my church, just seeing, like, joy seems to be a really big thing. You know, the spirit of laughter, you know, bringing out, because, you know, the new wine, the new glory. Come on. And just really, um, you know, that's God's desire for his church. And as we begin to drink, you know, I, I got it from that dream the other morning. I laughed for, like, 15 minutes. You know, after, Come like, on. That's a good way to start out. The joy of the just, Lord is our strength, right? right? <laughs> but when we laugh, you know, it really... That's the antidote mm -hmm. to heaviness. That's the antidote to oppression and depression. And I kind of wanted to do um, mm -hmm. maybe my podcast on this or next. Come on. But, you know, we believe the lie that it's okay or that we have to accept, you know, oppression, depression. But God has an antidote. You know, it's the Come oil on. of joy. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. his glory. Because when we get in his glory, you know, that stuff can't stay. You know, those hurts. Come on. You know, can't stay. And so, it, you know, that's what happens when we begin to cultivate that relationship you know, in the glory, and of course, you know, um, healings, yeah. you know, praying over people and just seeing God touch, you know, instantly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, remember I prayed for, I prayed for, I prayed for someone who had a heart issue um, the other day. Um, she Come had on. valve issues, and 
um, you know, it's not looking so good. She probably, she needs a bypass surgery. You know, the doctors have done mm. everything and put stents in. Um, but I pray for her. I began to feel the fire of God on my own heart. I said, do you feel that? Come on. You know, God's touching mm -hmm. you. I said, when you go back to the doctor, it's going to yeah. be different. And so mm. just, you know, and just being willing to release the glory. Come on. And I bring it because we're glory carriers. And so we can't hold it all to ourselves. So we got to release it. Amen. You know, wherever we go and just step out, you know, in faith. Amen. I seen Alberta said, "Send peace to Angel." So yeah, we send peace to Angel and and mm -hmm. I think it was your daughter that you okay. prayed over. Yeah, we just send peace right now Amen. in Jesus' name. But uh, yeah, I love um, like what Madeline was talking about. You know, your son and your daughter, and the whole reason that that the Holy Spirit put it on my heart to to talk about glory stories is because you know we are his temple we can carry his presence you know and and i know madeline as a friend and she cultivates that glory you know she's it's all about relationship it's all about mm -hmm. his glory you know it's all about getting close to the father and and he rubs off on you just his mm -hmm. presence is <laughs> it's like the overflow of who he is and and just i mean let's be honest there's days where i go through things and i just have to dance in his presence mm -hmm. like there's there's no words there's such a freedom of inner healing like what she was talking about inner healing deliverance and just worshiping the creator that mm -hmm. can build the glory because that's what we're created to do mm -hmm. is just worship him so everything that madeline said are some key ways that you can cultivate the presence of God and you can just ask him just say God you know if you're on here and you haven't made Jesus Christ your personal savior just say Jesus come into my heart they're talking about your presence here I don't mm -hmm. know what that means but Lord just come into my heart I know you died on that cross for me I just accept you I just accept that you were resurrected. Just make yourself real to me. And I just want to pray, um, Lord, just everybody that, that just uh, wants to know you right now in a real way, mm -hmm. in a real way, we just declare that you make yourself known to them and that they just feel your presence right now. Mm -hmm. so, that you just heal every heartache, every wound, mm -hmm. every rejection. That I'm, I hear somebody saying I'm unlovable. So just come mm -hmm. out of agreement with that lie. You're not unlovable. So any self-hate, we command that to go. So, mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ. And just say, Jesus, just let me feel your love. Mm -hmm. Just let me feel your love. Just say that in your heart. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you just fill them up right now. And before we dive into the Holy Spirit, if that was you and you just accepted Christ and you want to send me a message and, and get any type of disciple, just let me know. And um, just invite the Holy Spirit. You know, the word says, be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. So just just let him just, just he's not going to force you to speak in tongues, but you just open your mouth like a baby and just utter whatever Holy Spirit gives you. Just sad to say, Lord, let him be filled with your spirit right now. And just mm -hmm. let the Holy Spirit fill you and bubble up because I see him breaking away a deep wound of rejection right now. Just let mm -hmm. him fill you. I just see you like sobbing. And I see just, just your your prayer language is bubbling up because the Bible says the evidence of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in tongues and prophesying. So just let it all bubble up. Just hush up that kind of Even if you sound like a baby, just keep doing it. Just mm -hmm. let it fill you up because I just see somebody getting deeply healed right now. And uh, if you want to contact me later. Let's do it, but let's dive into the Holy Spirit. I just love him, so I can't Amen. wait to hear <laughs> your perspective. It's one of my favorite things to, mm -hmm. to teach about because he just, he's became my friend, and I know he's become yours. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, just share some key ways. Like, let's go to the beginning. Let's, let's share some funny stories or embarrassing stories, like beginning stages of who is Holy Spirit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I mean, and I know we both know Jennifer Eva is, but she had arrived mm -hmm. when um, you said, you know, there's been such a focus on, you know, Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit's kind of over there Come sort on. of thing, and we don't even really address him, you know. Come on. He, he's the spirit that lives on the inside of us, and, Amen. you know, he's our helper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was mm -hmm. probably like nine or ten, I believe. Come in, on. In a, in a church camp. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but really, probably not until the last, probably like a few years, a couple of years, that I really under, begin to really understand the revelation of him, like who he is and, and partnering, you know, with him and, um, and just really giving him permission, 
You know, because they say, you know, Holy Spirit's a gentleman, but he's Amen. not always a gentleman. He's feared. You know, no. He's the spirit of God. <laughs> he spanks me every once in a while. Yeah. You know, and he gives <laughs> he you a good He tells me whooping. what I need to do in a good <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, he gives you a good, you know, kick in the pants mm. sometimes. Amen. I need it sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he's also that comforter. Um, you know, Come he's on. also, you know, the spirit of bold. You know, I was reading, I was telling you last night, you know, I was reading, um, I just had this phrase, Lord, help me to know your comfort. Because, you know, we, we say Amen. the Holy Spirit's a comforter, but do we really, really know what that means? Do we really allow, you know, the Come Lord on. to comfort us? And I was reading, I was looking at that word on the parakletos. Um, and so yeah. comfort is also mm. kind of in that, but it talks yeah. about how, and this is for, for some of you tonight, that, you know, that, that comforter part is like a quilt blanket. You know, that he's wrapped on. around you. <laughs> and anytime, you know, the uh, disciples were brought before the council, the Holy mm. Spirit was right there with them to comfort, just to be there, you know, because he's closer than a brother, you know, Come closer um, than a friend. But just really learning, you know, he is our help. He's our teacher, yeah. the Spirit of God. Te- you know, sometimes yeah. I, I, you know, even like pastoring, you know, I, I would hear this a lot or see, like, people are so afraid that, they're going to be duped or, or, or deceived. But, you know, you come have on. the Holy Spirit in you. He's the Spirit of truth. Come on. And come out of agreement with that you. lie right now. Yeah, yeah. As she's sharing that. Just say, I don't believe I'm going to be mm-hmm. deceived because I have the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit who is mm-hmm. the teacher of all truth. So just renounce mm-hmm. that lie. Just say, I repent for believing I could go into deception. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to live in fear. Renounce any fear of that. Mm-hmm. And just say, Holy Spirit, I trust that you're going to mm-hmm. lead and guide me in all truth. Mm-hmm. That's why it's okay. important to get in the Word, but if we're not careful. Come on. You know, come on. So it says in the Bible that, you know, the very thing that you fear will come upon you. But I just hear this a lot, though. I don't know about that prophetic or, or I just don't <laughs> want you know, but you will be deceived if, you know, if you, you know, based, you know, if you go on a fear. Um, but Holy come Spirit on. is everything. You know, Holy Spirit is... You know, brings revelation, brings illumination. Come on. Um, you know, it's you know, it really is a friendship. You know, you can it have really. that one on one, and you know, Holy Spirit will talk to you. You know, the thing is, Holy Spirit will sound like you. It'll sound like come on. Sometimes we're waiting for this big <laughs> booming voice kind of thing, but <laughs> amen. <laughs> it's that inner witness. I hear people say that. Like, yeah, 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 the big I mean, boom. I mean, I've heard it in dream. I've heard the big boom a few times, but really, it's that, it's yeah, that inner on. witness. You know, is that close right here? He's gonna talk to you. Come you on, you just have to be be open. You know, he's there. He's there. He has your best interests at heart. Come on, you know. I, that's one of the things in my journey with Holy Spirit. You know, I was Methodist and all these different denominations for a long time, and it took me. A, some time to get used to the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So like you, I I love truth. So I was like, all right, God, if this is true, you have to show me in your word because I would always go back to the word. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the revelation, as I read the scriptures about being filled with the Holy Spirit right then and there, I got filled as I was getting filled with the truth. That's why I just love Mm -hmm. the spirit of truth. Right. So if you're on here and you want to know Holy Spirit, just say, Holy Spirit, just show me your truth. Show me who you are. Mm-hmm. I've always tried to get filled with Holy Spirit, and I've had some resistance. My head's gotten in the way. Just say, show me your truth, because God's not afraid of the big questions. Right. You know, nobody mm-hmm. needs to convince you that he's real or true. He can give you revelation. You can talk with them. You can ask. He's the third part of the Godhead. Mm-hmm. That's you right. know, he, that's what people don't understand is, is there's a relationship. Now, there's different times that I know that we both kind of, you, you talk different ways to Holy Spirit, because sometimes I tend to be more of a feeler. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to describe how, how that is for me. And then I'll let Madeline describe how that is for her. Like, I'll just give an example. Cause I love just real life examples. Mm-hmm. When, um, I was working at a hospital and I won't share any details about what happened, but I walked into a patient's room that had cancer. And as soon as I stepped into the door, I started falling. Mm-hmm. Like it was so supernatural. I couldn't even, like control if I wanted to, like I could have completely suppressed him, but I felt the Holy Spirit's full heart for this patient. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the things when you're a feeler, you can be very sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's feeling in the room, Mm -hmm. you know, or let me give another real life example. If you walk in the room and somebody's gossiping, you might feel grieving. 
Mm. You might feel like, oh, man, this just feels nasty. And that's mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's heart. So it could be, you know, an indication that you're a feeler. And I'll let you share, Madeline. I don't know if mm -hmm. you're more of the feeler or just sense in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can be more of the feeler, um, you know, walking into, especially church services. Or, Come on. Um, you know, I remember, um, mm -hmm. you know, there was a season where uh, church I was in, we were, we were going through some things. I remember... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, God's heart was grieved, the spirit had lifted, mm. and especially mm. as a prophet, you know, like, oh, <laughs> that's the yeah. worst thing. It's more sensitive. <laughs> Everything, you know. so sensitive. <laughs> um, but just mm. to do, uh, I think it was it Bill Johnson has said, you know, the Holy Spirit is like a dove, and you don't want to do on. anything um, to cause that dove or cause his spirit to lift. You know, Holy Spirit is, is Christ without measure, like his spirit without Come measure. On. You know, on the inside of us, the only, the only mm. measure, the only limitation is us. So Come Jesus on. walked with the Holy Spirit without measure, you know, as a man. And so just, mm. you know, so, many, so often we don't tap into uh, the full measure Come of on. Holy Spirit. And that really comes from yielding. You know, it says mm. um, in Romans 8, you know, the sons of God are led by, you know, His Spirit, by the unctions of Holy Come Spirit. On. And so to, to do that, um, you know, we have to surrender. We gotta get Come out of on. our head. We gotta get out it's of our head. It's such a huge part. Yeah, in, in it's our so logic, true. Um, because yeah. it's the life of the spirit walking. You know, in the spirit, not as natural, because we're we're spiritual beings. And to really allow um, Holy Spirit to flow, to walk in signs and wonders consistently, you know, we need to live a surrender life. It's you know, that, truly that's yielding. Mm -hmm. it, it's truly yielding because if I ignored Madeline every time she told me anything. <laughs> then why would she keep telling me stuff to do mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. It doesn't always even have to be something to do. If Madeline kept saying April, 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 and I never listened to her, well, that's how the Holy Spirit is, mm -hmm. you know. I just, I love his sensitivity. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm just being real. There was times when I, when I first started listening to him way years back. Um, I, let me try to think of an example that may help some. Okay, so prophetic word. Let's just go there. Holy Spirit, I had set in my seat. This was years ago when I was, you know, learning how to prophesy and everything. And I was asking the Lord. I was tired. You know, it's always when you're mm -hmm. tired that, that God wants you to, to speak. And, and that's what he's supposed, we're supposed to allow him to just be a yielded vessel, no matter what's mm -hmm. going on in our lives, and just say yes. So it was late. Me and my husband were driving back really late from a restaurant. And um, as soon as I sat down, the Holy Spirit gave me a word, and it was so fast. I thought, man, this can't be it. Like, it smacked me down, and I didn't want to give the word. And uh, I was like, man, I never, I, you know, I was eating my food. I'm tired. I was giving myself all these excuses in my head. I'm just sharing a real-life story so that maybe some of y'all would encourage you. And um, as soon as I stood up to leave the restaurant, I felt the Holy Spirit grieve. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no. And I slowly tiptoed to my car. I tried to get her. She didn't come to me. I'm like, man, I didn't deliver this word. I was like, i got to deliver this word. I can't be disobedient. I can't grieve the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, my husband looks at me and says, yeah, God was testing you to see if you were going to be obedient and see if you were going to give that word or not. I was like, that's it. I'm not failing this test. I'm, I cannot stand to grieve the Holy Spirit. So I got on the phone. And got this waitress on the phone and gave her the word. But I'm just telling you. <laughs> That's persistence. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was like, I cannot grieve Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. if, any, if you feel like you're getting something, just release it. And it ended mm -hmm. up being a word about a death. It was a waiter that we had that night that had a close, um, I think it was either her, her little boy or boyfriend that had died. And she needed to know God loved her. And mm -hmm. so I was so thankful. She received the word so well. But I'm just encouraging you from even as you learn to walk with Holy Spirit. You know, he wasn't mad at me. He grieved. I understood how to, to feel his grief and then reacted to it. So it made mm -hmm. me more proactive in saying, no, I'm not going to grieve him. Because if you honor him, mm -hmm. then he'll start showing you more stuff. Or, or he could speak. To, it doesn't always have to be doing stuff. It can be about a relationship with one of your kids. Mm -hmm. It could be about a relationship as a wife. Well, your husband needs this because the Holy Spirit, like what Madeline was saying, he teaches us all things. So mm -hmm. is there any any stories you'd like to, to share, Madeline, when you were first getting to know him that maybe, you know, was a little messy? I feel like some beginners are on here like, I think I hear Holy Spirit, but, but 
But I think but even, the butts going on. Yeah, even <laughs> I think, you know, this word of knowledge thing is really big right now. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. um, you know, just began to step out. That's not something mm-hmm. I... Or really knew that I specifically flowed in, but um, so I would go to the store. Kro- we have Kroger here, <laughs> and walk no, I miss Kroger. <laughs> yeah, and then the you know, Holy Spirit would pick somebody out. <laughs> Come on, I remember so there was this one guy. I think it was at Kroger. I forget what I said mm. to him, um, but it was kind of, I kind of I missed it. I, I was off. Um, but he was just more enamored that I had, you know, the guts to, mm-hmm. but you know, even, even if you miss mm-hmm. it, don't, don't Come let on. that stop you. Cause oftentimes, you know, when people see the genuineness or say, Hey, I'm just practicing how to learn how to hear God's voice. Cause usually I mean, April, like us being here, it, it took, mm-hmm. you know, trial and errors <laughs> Come on. to get here Amen. to be accurate and to, to listen. And even, you know, even we miss it still, you know, sometimes, but, um, Amen. store is a great place to go. Or when God would, um, you know, challenge me uh, to go pray. I know, I know when God is challenging me because there'll be seasons where God will begin to highlight people that have, like, cast mm. or crutches or, you know, or cane Come on. in the store. And the Lord would be like, I want you to go pray for them. I remember mm-hmm. there was this, um, I think maybe Middle Eastern. She was kind of, of a different culture. Yeah. And I saw her and the Lord highlighted uh, her to me. And, and he began to talk to me about how she was an intercessor. Wow. stuff and I was like oh, I don't know if I want to say I'm like well, Lord, if, I, if I see her on the other end of the store maybe we've all said that before then Holy start, Spirit don't yeah, really you, know, you, you get weird you start stalking them right because you're not you don't want to quite miss it but you're not that's sure. right that's so right I start stalking this woman <laughs> so finally that's what we <laughs> say right we've learned R-I-S-K no matter yes. what we look like right Madeline <laughs> even prophet you know <laughs> prophets. come on and so uh, we finally mm. you know kind of met I said hey I just uh, I just wanted to encourage you I just really um, mm. saw God showed me that you're a really awesome prayer warrior and that your mm. prayers move and it's funny she um, it's actually she said she was with the church of the latter day saints kind of thing even though it was kind of a different religion um, but I don't know if she was always, you know, started out that way. But I feel like yeah. I was wanting to Praise encourage God. her Amen. and remind her. But she said, thank you, you know, thank you. And, mm-hmm. But you never know. You're just, you know, um, you're showing God's heart. And that's what Come it's on. You know, you I've done that. You've done that. I did that on the streets in Hollywood. I had, mm-hmm. you know, somebody was in the new age and the Holy Spirit just wanted me to allow him to feel Holy Spirit, Amen. you know, and, you know, sometimes they'll accept Jesus and sometimes they're not ready, but Holy Spirit right. can give them a dream. Holy Spirit can talk to them, right. you know, and sometimes you're just planting a seed. So I've learned mm-hmm. no matter how big or small, like mm-hmm. what Madeline was saying, if it's a word of knowledge at the grocery store or if it's a word of knowledge on the broadcast or it, you know, when, mm-hmm. like when Madeline travels or when me and Richard travel, if we give that word of knowledge, we're honoring Holy Spirit. Right. You yeah, know, nothing really happens or, not, you know, I remember nothing uh, happens. Being, yeah. being in Kroger too. This guy was in one of the, um, mm. the motorized wheelchairs. I think he has mm. something wrong with his foot. And so Come Holy Spirit's like, go pray for him. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I did come say, hey, sir, you know, can I can I come pray for you? And I think uh, I forget mm. what it was. He had pain um, or such, okay. and uh, and so I prayed for him, but nothing happened. He still felt the same. But he said, you know, that's okay. It's like I'm just really blessed that you uh, mm. took the opportunity because you know people don't come do on. that anymore. And then uh, I'm remembering another story. Uh, this was probably a couple of months ago, three or four months ago. Mm. I went mm. to go buy new like running shoes at the mall, and I saw I think wow. this older man was in a wheelchair. And he had some break. He had a couple of different things going on. I could tell. Come on. And the Lord said to go pray for him. <laughs> and they're like, because <laughs> <laughs> right? you know, you're just seeing, you just see because sometimes you can have you a faith, presumption of you know. But yeah. I began to feel. I just Lord began to tell me. Yeah, come on. That he was in pain. Mm. So I kind of his wife is like over here, and mm. so I kind of like I was like, hey, sir, how are you? You know, just trying to strike up a conversation. And I said, yeah, that's um, right. I said, are you in pain? Are you in a lot of pain? He goes, oh, yes, honey, you know, every day, and yeah, this and that, and, um, and so eventually I was kind of, like, talking, and we kind of talked a little mm-hmm. bit about, and so finally I said, hey, is it, can I, can I pray for you? Can Amen. I pray for you? And so they, oh, yeah, sure, I found out that, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're believers and that, but I began to pray, um, for the pain, I began, the Lord began to give me more knowledge about his mobility and all this stuff. Come and on. So, and I felt that, you know, the Spirit of God in, in the finish line, you know, Macy's, you know, shoes Come somewhere. on. And I think mm-hmm. the church they went, they go to a Methodist church. I don't know how spirit 
you know, build. Yeah. They are there. Um, but, he, you know, they felt the presence in it. And so I asked, you know, so how's your pain? And I was like, oh, it's, it's a lot better. I don't mm-hmm. feel, you know, just, you know, God, you know, for somebody that's in chronic pain, you know, every Come day, on. just, you know, the spirit of God touched them, you know, out of, um, out of their, their usual routine, you know, out of usual mm-hmm. just feeling all that. And so um, there's just a special encounter, you know, for them. And they're just blessed. Amen. You know, as another believer coming. You know, Amen. And I, there's times mm-hmm. that the Holy Spirit will challenge me, and I'm seeing results. And there's times where I've just risked it. You know, right. I was at a I was at a hot dog place getting a hot dog <laughs> one time with my son, and the, and I saw a person with a wheelchair. And the Lord's like, "I need you to go pray for them." I'm like, "Okay, you know, you go into. <laughs> am I ready? You know, is my faith built up?" And then it's like, "No, I'm resting. This is." And I went over there, and I sat down, mm-hmm. and, you know, I just enjoyed talking to them while they were having dinner. And um, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge of what it called the per- caused the paralysis and stuff in her legs. Mm-hmm. And she got up, and she took about five steps, and that was it. She was done. You know, she mm-hmm. she went back in the wheelchair, you know, and I was hoping she wasn't going to get back out. But I, it's just like I don't care the results and I don't care mm-hmm. the risk. If I'm found obedient to the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. like what Madeline was saying, then I'm honoring him and the results right. are up to him. Like I would have loved for her to just ran around the hot dog mm-hmm. place and mm-hmm. never got in a chair. And that's what we we're aiming for. But it's like, what if it's that one time that Holy Spirit goes and tells you to go pray right. for the wheelchair and you don't? You know, I don't right. want to be held accountable for that. I don't want to grieve him like that. You right. know, because he loves them more than I do. You right. know, I barely know mm-hmm. them, but it's like that supernatural compassion of God right. just comes into your heart. Mm-hmm. And you just can't help but say, I don't care how stupid I look. I love Holy Spirit. And mm-hmm. he, he's so passionate about loving people. And when you right. think like that. He'll give mm-hmm. you the heart to right. do with, like what Madeline said. Mm-hmm. You know, you take time. The stuff that we do when we go out is pray for people and everybody on the broadcast. You can do that. Mm-hmm. You can yeah, surrender. Yeah, you know, said, uh, you know, Jesus was moved. He had compassion. He was moved. Come on. You know, about the until mm-hmm. walking signs and wonders, you have to have compassion. That's number Come one, on. you know, key. Because um, you can't pray and believe for people that you don't care about, that you don't have God's heart for. Come on. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, people get mm-hmm. themselves in situations where they have chronic things. And it would Come be on. easy to be insensitive to it. But when we have God's heart, you know, we can release mm-hmm. his heart. We can release the miraculous. Come um, on. That's what moved Jesus. His motivation was compassion. Mm-hmm. And often I remember, um, I forget where, like, in the in the Gospels, but he couldn't heal uh, everybody sometimes. Because so his heart was so moved that he wanted to touch everybody, you mm-hmm. know, but but he couldn't. But also, I just want to encourage Please. you guys to, um, you know, release the word of knowledge when you go to pray. Ask the Lord. Come on. Usually, you know, that's a, that's mm. a gateway. It really kind of helps because sometimes you're going to have tougher, you know, Come on. True. Than some of tougher customers, you know, sometimes, so to speak. Come on. Um, and that will help to, oh, okay, maybe this person does, you know. <laughs> so if no. they're on here, mm-hmm. if they're on here and they've never, they don't know what a word of knowledge is, mm-hmm. to so, share. Yeah, so word of knowledge is, you know, information um, that God gives you that, you know, you didn't have any idea or, or know anything Come about. On. And so you're in that moment and God, you know, gives like you revelation, uh, yeah, revelation, information of something Come that happened in, in, in their life and childhood mm-hmm. or something, maybe their favorite food or color, mm-hmm. something just to connect um, God's heart, you know, to those that they're known. Amen. And mm-hmm. I, I just love how Holy Spirit... There's so many scriptures about Holy Mm -hmm. Spirit, and there's so many different avenues of who he is. It was hard to just say everything Mm -hmm. we wanted to cover tonight. But, you know, I thought about the creative power, you Mm -hmm. know, for the miraculous. Because in Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, 1, 2, you know, the Holy Spirit hovered over the earth. Mm -hmm. So I thought about that, and I was asking Holy Spirit, what else do you want me to share and talk with Madeline and, and share about the character? Because he's so hard to... He's so mm-hmm. vast. There's such a depth right. to the Holy Spirit. It's like, how right. can you? We're just touching the surface level of who he is and right. just enjoying his presence. But then I thought about, you know, in Acts 1 8, where the, the power, you know, mm-hmm. where the Holy Spirit comes upon to do mm-hmm. miraculous, you know, whatever mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, arms growing out, limbs growing out, you mm-hmm. know, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. And then they, in Acts 4 31, boldness. You know, and, and he's the teacher. He's the spirit of truth. It's like he's the comforter. Mm-hmm. But what would you say to somebody that's hungering for the Holy Spirit, but their their head keeps getting in the way? 
but they're hungry for them. Mm -hmm. I think you have a language that will help them kind of get out of the... Yeah, I think, because uh, I was <laughs> teaching on my, my seer class the other night about this, Come how on. to really, you know, to go in the Spirit, to see, you know, the things of the Spirit, you really have to, it's that surrender, you have to let go of your logic, what you think you know, because um, you can't, because it says in that scripture, um, you know, I think it's in Romans where, you know, the the flesh cannot receive um, the things, you know, of the Spirit. It has Come no, on. it rejects the things of the Spirit. And so only the Spirit knows the things of the Spirit. Only the Spirit can understand the things of the Spirit. Come and on. so I just encourage you to get, um, you know, get some worship music on or even like prophetic instrumental, you know, music. Come on. Just, Amen. If, even if it's five minutes, sit there mm. and just, you know, practice mm. kind of really shutting down your mind and just, you know, being at peace. And then you'll, you'll go to 10 minutes, mm. you'll go to 15, you know, set small goals. You know, sometimes we see Amen. these people, you know, three hours out, you know, whatever you <laughs> have. Yeah, but just start start with a goal. And just be be willing. You know, it may not happen. You know, right away. Yeah. But God, He He's giving you um, the invitation mm -hmm. for more. There's always more. Come on. You know, and so uh, and just trust trust the process and trust mm -hmm. that that is the Spirit of God on the inside of you, and He wants to speak to you. He wants to show you things yeah. um, you've not seen before, things you don't know. And that's the thing when when God shows you is because it's Him. If you already knew it, you know. It wouldn't be God. Amen. Hey. There's a Angel. feather floating around my face. Angels are showing sure up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, like you said, it, it's so mm -hmm. true. It's, it's a process of cultivating the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. asking Him, reading in the Word. Mm -hmm. It's a combination. Like, I personally couldn't receive the Holy Spirit, even though people had tried over and over and over until I had revelation in the Word. Yeah. And then when God, but I asked Him, so I, did, I kept knocking. I'm mm -hmm. like, if this is real, if this is true, then mm -hmm. fill me with your spirit. Like, sometimes it's that holy invitation to keep mm -hmm. knocking, knocking. Yeah, I and you know, know you, Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the word opens the door to the rhema, or the, the word the logos opens the door to revelation. Come and on. because, you know, Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the spirit. And Come so, on. You know, if you, have, if you are that logically, you know, get in the word, find the scriptures on Holy Spirit. You know, the Amen. spirit of God, as you begin to meditate, you know, the, each scripture is a doorway into the realm of the spirit. Come and on. Each, each scripture is a doorway into, you know, encounter. So. Amen. Amen. And I know one scripture he keeps bringing up that is Luke eleven thirteen that he gives good gifts. So if mm. you're on here, just have an expectation. And, and I think I really... Um, this is just my personal testimony, and everybody's is different, and Madeline's may di be different. The time that I really grew close to the Holy Spirit is through inner healing. Like, I'm not dismissing inner healing. I love inner healing ministry, but, man, me and Holy Spirit, we, were, we became like this when he took me through a season. Um, it was in my life. That I was giving God excuses. I was a hungry lion. I wanted to get to the nations. I was declaring every day I'm going to the nations. And the father spoke to me and he said, what kind of God would I be if I didn't heal you, but I healed the nations? And so one of the things that as soon as, you know, the Lord said that to me, Holy Spirit started an inner healing process. So th there's realms that, that people, I just hate the excuses, I can't get to a sozo, or I can't mm -hmm. get to the, mm -hmm. you know, I can't get here, I can't get there, I can't. And uh, some people have dismissed the Holy Spirit as the comforter, like you were talking about. And the time that I got so close to him, man, he pulled out, like, I'm, I'm just real, because that's who I am, like, neglect from, like, mm -hmm. you know, that had been, you know, I'd been through a bunch of trauma. And he unlayered layers that I think Holy Spirit made it so personal to me, because it would have hurt too bad to let anybody else do it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the areas that I grew so strong in how in the communicate with him and understanding him because then I knew I kind of let down my walls with Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so if you're on here and you're a little scared you know come out of agreement with that fear mm -hmm. yes there's a fear of the Lord but it's not an unhealthy fear 
But mm-hmm. there's been times where the Holy Spirit has told me your attitude stinks or, <laughs> you know, whatever. So I welcome his discipline because I want a pure heart no matter what mm-hmm. it costs me, right? Mm-hmm. And I know you do too, Madeline. It's just you have to be ready for whatever he says. So just right. I'm just warning you, like, be ready for the love relationship, but be ready for the correction mm-hmm. that you need to bring that that character because you're, you're going from glory to glory to glory mm-hmm. to transformation like Jesus. So we have to... Be prepared for both aspects of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. even though he has way more than that. But Amen. I don't want to dismiss that I love his correction because for right. something when he speaks it and you know it's love and it's truth, mm-hmm. that it's just, it's freeing. Yeah, it brings transformation, you know. Uh, there's on. things now that, um, you know, a couple of years ago I would hold on to. And then there's things that when it begins to rise up where I don't want to, you know, forgive my spouse or situations. <laughs> Come on, that, it's know, real. With Come friends, on. Uh, husband, no, you can't keep that. You know, it's not worth Amen. it. Amen. That's going to hinder mm. um, Come on. where you're going. It's going to hinder what I'm trying to do in your life. And, and to carry, um, you know, his glory. He's, he's a holy God. And so Come anytime on. we get close to the glory, he's going to begin, you know, because it's a mirror, right? Like, you know, Come spirit. on. It's a mirror, and so as we begin to look in the Word, we begin to see, oh, that doesn't, you know, that's not quite, that that doesn't look good, or that part, and so, but He comes in that love, too, in in those places, um, because we all have walls, right, because of what, you know, has happened in life, how um, the parents that we've had, um, you know, they've done our best, or just, you know, the representation that, you know, we've got a father, Mm -hmm. or or mother, or, you know, other, you know, people in our lives, oftentimes we project that onto you know yeah. uh, the Lord and Jesus and Holy Spirit and so sometimes yeah. we don't realize the walls and so just begin to ask the Lord you know what are the walls that are hindering Amen. me from you know knowing you uh, in a closer way in a more personal way you know because we were meant to yeah. walk you know one one you know breath mm-hmm. to breath you know that kind of you can Amen. be that intimate that close with him and you know I don't like when I know that you know I'm irritated or perturbed and he's not mm-hmm. you know I don't want to be that way I want to be sensitive to his, you know, conviction. Mm. I don't want to cause anything That's for real. him to live. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So I will I... swallow my pride. And, you know, go yeah, me too. <laughs> Been there, you know? done that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not worth it to allow, um, you know, I'm really seeing in the body, I just really prayed over a lot of people, just anger and just really bitterness bitterness there's people you know it's not worth it because really you know bitterness um it really eats you from the inside out you know it's it's demonic i'm not saying that you are demonic but just uh it's a lie you know the enemy yeah amen and you know i don't know who that's for but um you know god wants you to let go of that bitterness he wants you come on um you know what they did to you or what's been done it's not worth it you know god wants you to live in peace yeah. He wants you to live in, in joy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Lord, I just really, sometimes I know it's easier to let go of bitterness if the wound is healed. Mm-hmm. So I just ask you to touch that, that wound right now. I just see betrayal. I don't know yeah. who this is for. I'm not going to call it out. That's just rude. I want to honor you. So if this you, just, just let the Holy Spirit, I just want to honor what he wants to do right now. I see him breaking that shock and trauma off from the betrayal right now. So mm-hmm. just receive it. Whoa! I just and there is an anointing that, that he just binds up the wounds, the brokenhearted. I just, I just love Holy Spirit. So mm-hmm. I just release that over your heart right now. Mm-hmm. And just like Madeline said, as the Lord heals that heart, just let that that cry is like a release of the healing yeah. of the heart. Whoa! I, I just, I can't move from this place yet. So just Lord, I just release that love of the Father mm-hmm. over all that shock and pain and trauma. Mm-hmm. Even the mother wound right now. I just see the Lord just just, just releasing that, that inner healing anointing to bind mm-hmm. up the, your broken heart right now. And he loves you. Woo. Mm-hmm. I just want to honor him for a second. I just see him like doing open heart surgeries. So if you're on here and, and that word, you feel the inner, the inner healing anointing just pouring over your heart. A lot of people describe it as like honey. It's whatever Holy Spirit wants you to feel. But if you feel him moving in your heart right now just whatever comes to your mind whether it's rejection let him heal that wound whether mm-hmm. it's you know uh, a hurt by some something somebody said to you whatever mm-hmm. whatever holy spirit shows you let him be your teacher right mm-hmm. now just let him heal those deep places you're yeah, not to um 
not to be graphic, but this picture, I, I prayed over a Come woman, on. you know, yeah. for deliverance, the Lord um, showed me she had a root of bitterness, so I began to call it come to come on. up and out, you know, that spirit, and she began, come on. you know, to get sick in the bucket, and um, it was it was black, you know, yeah. the demonic stuff was coming come out, on. but, um, you know, it had, it had a stench to it, but I just want to give the picture of, you know, sometimes we don't realize mm -hmm. in the spirit with that stuff that, you know, it's a natural thing, come but... On. You know, the spirit is that, that bitterness is black, it's evil, it's demonic, you know, it's corrupting your heart. You know, it's hindering it's the glory. Stench. Yeah, it's hindering the glory. Yeah. And so God wants to remove every, um, you know, hindrance. Mm -hmm. I even see now in the spirit, some of you are, are, are coughing or crying or just let Come that on. step out. Just receive Amen. his freedom, you know, and, and deliverance. Yes. Um, you know, for that, just let us know if that's yeah. hitting you. I see, I see, I feel it. <laughs> we just call that up and out. Jesus. Yeah, we, we just to cough or yeah, we bathroom. just ax that root. Yeah. We 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 curse mm -hmm. that root. We ax it at the root. Command it to just be axed with the axe of Jesus Christ, and that very root, like what Madeline was mm -hmm. saying, is coming out. And just mm -hmm. let the washing of the water of the word just renew your yeah. mind right now, and just just say it out loud. I choose to forgive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just so freeing, don't you think, Madeline, just to yeah. bless that person. It just is. Just bless them right back. Is because that, a lot that of breaks times, the power well, of the curse. Mm -hmm. Come on. And a lot of times mm -hmm. people only wound you because they're wounded. Right. Hurt <laughs> people, crazy? hurt people. Amen. That's so yep. true. Hurt people, So just people. forgive them mm -hmm. because you don't know, like, where. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Holy Spirit. Right. And, and, you, and know? you know, a lot of times it's not really about you. Come on. It's, it's not so true. Did. It's not really about you. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we can, if we're not careful, you know, we can become a, a weapon of the enemy against one another just because we have open doors and sometimes we don't realize. So if you can, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't give an mm -hmm. excuse, but when you're able to kind of take a step back and really, um, you know, discern the spirit, you know, of the matter, it, it helps. So, Come on. But Amen. really, sometimes it's not, it's not really even about you. Sometimes yes. the and if you, wants to hinder, you know, destiny. Amen. And if you're on here and, and you know Holy Spirit, but you're hungry for more, I mean, it's just as simple as asking, Holy Spirit, I just dedicate all my senses to you. Because we have spiritual senses as well as mm -hmm. we do natural. We have a spiritual right. smell, spiritual sight, like what me and Madeline have been talking mm -hmm. about. Spiritual, you know, touch. Spiritual, like, I love what James Gall says, you're knower. Yeah, you just you know, know that I'm a you big know knower. that you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a big knower. So sometimes you're on here and Holy Spirit told me to talk about, you know, you just know and there's mm -hmm. no guess, there's no and you will be in situation and that is Holy Spirit talking mm -hmm. to you and you're really like, How do I know that? It's the Holy Spirit. So just say, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, touch each one of my senses and make them more sensitive to you because it really is about honor. Right. You know, Hebrews yeah. 5.14, that Come spiritually ma mature discern, they're able to Come rightly, on. you know, judge. And judge there is in a bad way. You, you have to, Come on. you know, the Word of God uh, discerns, it divides. And so we have Come the on. Word in us, you know, in our senses, they mm -hmm. we're, we're properly judging, you know, body, soul, Amen. spirit. You know, we're judging the source of a thing. And we're called, you know, Come Jane on. Hammond talked about this at the Prophets and Seers. Amen. You know, in California, you know, that and she has a book on it. Go get her book on the sermon. Amen. Um, but they're, we're called to judge. We're called to judge Come a thing on. in the right spirit. Yeah, you know, to Amen. discern the source. But we have to, to mature in those things. We have to practice. Amen. To, to grow in it. And you definitely cannot discern without the Holy Spirit because that's one right. of his gifts. Because without him, it's judgment. <laughs> Amen. It's so true because he keeps us in love, right? Yes, yeah, so without love, without love it's, it's really judgment. And, and so that's the thing, that too. Line, you know. And it's measuring the fruit in people's lives. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it, it really is. I know we've shared a lot about encounters and different things, even on this broadcast. But it's always about fruit, mm -hmm. you know, because Holy Spirit wants us to bear fruit. Not that we're just some superhuman you know people get so enamored by gifts but you have mm -hmm. to look at the fruit of the holy spirit which is love joy peace patience kindness and mm -hmm. i know we're all in the process but fruit mm -hmm. grows right you know we're at different levels of joy or different levels of long suffering mm -hmm. or you know, you know your gifts um you don't have to proclaim your gifts you know, your Come gifts on. will speak you know and, and fruit and you know, and, and, you know, prophetically, you know, trees can represent us. And you want to make sure that you have, you know, not just mm. one fruit, but different fruit. You want to be well-rounded, you know. Don't just pray for one gift. You know, explore the other gifts 
um, Amen. you know, that Holy Spirit has made, you know, available. There's, there's mm-hmm. no measure to, to, the, you know, to the access. And so, um, you know, press into that B. And, you know, I think, too, also, you know, discernment is going to be one of the major things. Amen. In the body of Christ, you know, in the days to come, um, it's really going to be a, a, a big thing to have. And, you know, I, I do mm-hmm. err. I would say I'm more like a watchman to, like, you know, to say. Amen. And, um, but God's calling his people to do that, to give the hard words, too. Come on. Also, I'm all about blessing and glory. Um, but also there's a glory in giving the hard words, you know, because God loves. Come right? on. We talked about there's a glory. Yeah. Really Amen. His heart, you know, and that way God's looking for those people to rightly discern and rightly, you know, release the word and, and to expose motives. Amen. Proof. Let's go there for a second because mm-hmm. I know some people that dismiss hard words because it's mm-hmm. not a prophetic word. So just explain, like, I know it's really short. Just explain, like, <laughs> the difference in a prophetic word and a prophet warning word. Because yeah. I've seen mm-hmm. people dismiss words that they shouldn't have because they're taught it's only supposed to be positive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say, you know, we're all called to prophesy. You know, First Corinthians Come 5, on. you know, the gifts. And, and Paul said, I desire that you all, would, you know, would prophesy, you know, as to edify, you know, encourage, you know, strengthen. And that's within, you know, that gift of prophecy. And really, um, you know, the prophet is kind of not that you can't give. A hard word, but you should have a relationship, you know, with Come somebody. Because, um, you know, my Amen. apostle used to say this, you know, if you give um, a hard word with um, outside of relationship, is anarchy. You know, you produce anarchy. Amen. And that's so true. just always, um, just because you're seeing something doesn't mean that you have the right to say it either. Come on. And so just find the balance. But I would say. That's where you have to ask the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> right. You know, depending on the relationship. But really, you know, just uh, as the prophetic gift thing is, you know, as the church, the body, we, we're all, we can all prophesy. Come but on. within the bounds of that encouraging, strengthening, you know, comfort. But as, Amen. A, as a prophet, you carry it, you know, a different weight, a different authority. And so, um you know, you, you see the gold and you see, you know, the other side, but it's, you know, learning how to kind of, uh, to word that. But, Amen. you know, if anything, um, if you don't share the heart, that's not God's heart not to share the heart, because he loves us enough. Come to, on. You know, he doesn't embarrass us. It's not an embarrassing thing. Come on. Um, but we have to be willing to receive both. I would say, you no, know, a prophet would really have the authority to, Come on. Um, but it's just, it's just been done wrong. And so there's a bad taste. And a lot of Amen. you know prophets have done it it's to expose true. people or to, and, and that's not been the right motive. Um, but even you know, no love, as, right? Right. And so, but God's really calling. You know, or He's raising up a pure prophetic to, like, you know, I've been having some. You know, I mean, a lot of you see, like, I, I post a lot of positive and glory and all that. But another part of my mantle is, you know, God speaks to me a lot about the body of Christ, and I don't always release. You know, warning, but, you know, there's exposure coming. There's things, you know, mm-hmm. there's blood on leaders' hands. Like, God's getting ready to. Yeah. And so, it's just kind of learning, yeah. your, knowing your authority, knowing um, mm. your Metron, which you, amen. Are, you know. It's true. You don't step it's out so of the same lane, you know. Yeah, amen. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It's knowing the grace, and right. that's what she means by lane. Like, what grace mm-hmm. God has for you may be different than the grace I have, mm-hmm. or maybe different than the Madeline. So it's really cultivating your gifts and mm-hmm. honoring and stewarding it well. Right. The Holy Spirit wants me to talk about stewardship. He said that really loud to me. So what would you say in any gift or any part of the relationship, like any assignment the Holy Spirit gives you, you want to talk about stewarding? Because I know you've been faithful in many areas. Mm-hmm. Um what kept you stewarding as soon as you started an mm-hmm. assignment the Holy Spirit gave you? Because I feel like there's some people on here that mm-hmm. you want to quit an assignment. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll let her speak into that for a second. <laughs> I think, um, you know, just having um, the right motive to begin with to start. Come on. You know, because sometimes Amen. you're going to have those things that go beyond, you know, the expectation date. You know, sometimes the motive on. is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, having being consistent in what Come you're doing, and um, uh, you know, being you know, God said, if you're faithful mm-hmm. with a little, you know, I, I can Come give on. you more. And so sometimes we're just wanting the big, the whole enchilada. God Come said, on. no, 
No, and Holy Spirit's I, like, you can't handle that one yet. Yeah, I guess I can now. <laughs> but he knows us. And so just he being knows us so good. faithful and, you know, and just stewarding the little. Amen. Um, read everything about your gifting. Read everything that you can, you know. Um, look Come up, on. Look up ministers. Look up, you know, uh, mentors from afar and, and near. Amen. You know, of course, get in the Word of God. Look everything up about it. You know, read stories. Mm-hmm. Um do because you know I, I remember listening to Stephen for he had a message about David and how you know David mm. um, worked his slingshot in the wilderness. You know he knew mm-hmm. how to use it. He was faithful with it. Even he wasn't called to the big right. stage yet. But this is always this all has always stuck with me. But he knew how to work it in the wilderness. He killed the lion there. But when it was his time, because mm. he was consistent, he was faithful. He was, he was called to that place, called to shepherd, called to that. But then you know when God increased mm. him. There was no change, you know, just his Metron increased, but he still knew how to work that, that slingshot. You know, they try to put Saul's armor on him mm-hmm. and said, no, I can't do this. But when you're faithful, you know, God will use that, you know, he knew how to work it. You know, what if he, what if he didn't, what if he just laid his slingshot down Come on. on the rock and didn't know how to work it? You know, he would just quit. Been, yeah. Right. He wouldn't have been confident when, when it came time for Goliath. And so yeah. when you're consistent and that, you know, you can build that confidence in what God's called you to do. And, you know, don't allow people to talk you out of it, you know, no. Come on. No, oh God, because there's going to be people, good, good, well-meaning people. Good people, <laughs> yeah. Amen. And then you have some negative, but just, um, just know that, you know, you know, get that vision, you know, in your heart and just run with it until God says. Amen. So. Amen. And David became king because he right. was faithful. You know, right. he kept going low. There's like, promotion you know, in that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He went low. I mean, David could have killed Saul. Right. You know, he could have, and he went low, mm-hmm. and I just think that speaks the humbleness of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, Holy Spirit has right more right to show off than anybody, mm-hmm. but, you know, he, it's like he comes upon us when he senses that humility right. because it's honoring him. Mm-hmm. You know, like with what me and Madeline said, it's just about yeah. going low and it being obedient mm-hmm. no matter what we look like, yeah. you know, to humility the world. Humility will attract the Holy Spirit. Come on. Every time. It's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's times you'll get in conflicts and you don't even, you don't even have a wrong heart. But the right. Holy Spirit will say, go low. Right. Just go low because it's, if you know, it, it's mm-hmm. that fruit. It's right. that fruit, like what, what you honor, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, he is our vindicator. We right. don't, you know, vengeance is the Lord's. We don't have to defend ourselves. Mm-hmm. We don't have to, we just have to honor him. Because, you, um, you know, oftentimes it's not so much what happens to you, it's how you react Come to on. it. It's so and true. So. <laughs> it's so true. Holy Spirit. And I love how <laughs> yeah. Holy Spirit just keeps us pure yeah. and he'll challenge. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll challenge your thought life. Right. He'll mm-hmm. challenge you know, your reaction to people. Mm-hmm. And we're all growing in love. You right. know, that's one of the things I love about Holy Spirit is, you know, not only does he help me love God better and, help, mm-hmm. and, you know, pay attention to what Jesus is doing, but also he can help me love my spouse better. He can help me love my friends better. Mm-hmm. He can help me love my kids better. So I love the personal aspect of the Holy Spirit that it's not just about ministry, right. but he wants to be, he wants to be so intimate with you that it's in every arena of your life. Because, you know, right. you might... You might talk to Holy Spirit at church, but what about, you know, when you want to go get ice cream? There's been times <laughs> when, I've, when I've asked the Holy Spirit, what should I get on the menu? I don't know what kind of nutrition, like, mm-hmm. my body needs right now. And he'll tell me. Yeah. You know, he'll just say, eat the chicken or you need whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's yeah, it's like growing in love with mm-hmm. that um, surrender level. Yeah. Even in, even in things that you wouldn't even think Holy Spirit cares about, mm-hmm. if you ask him. You know, like, if I yeah. asked Madeline, do you care about your pen, Madeline? Madeline would tell me, yeah, I love my pen. You know, that's my sword. But yeah. it's just, it's that, it's that relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think even just every, every day stuff, you know, or Holy Spirit, Come should on. I do this? Or should I call this person? Or Come on. Do I need to stay up and spend time with you? Or should I go to bed? Because, you know, this just. Come on. He knows, he knows best. Amen. And should I go to this restaurant? And sometimes right. Holy Spirit has said, nope, you're going the opposite direction. You need to go right. here. But somebody there needed a breakthrough, like right. prayer, or prophetic word. So mm-hmm. it's all about. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's the Holy Spirit. Love. That's the Spirit led life. You know, the unction. Amen. It's not weird. You know, it might seem Amen. weird. But being, Amen. That's, how you, that's how you become more and more led by the Spirit. And, you know, Benny Hinn has that book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's different people that are generals. Some people are controversial about it. Some people are not. But if you go watch um, Catherine Kuhlman, 
you watch her talk mm-hmm. about the Holy Spirit, you know, it'll really stir up hunger in you. So if you know Holy Spirit and you've prayed tonight and you wanted to know him more, go watch Catherine Kuhlman's video on the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> you know, that'll make you hungry or, oh, yeah. you know, like Benny Hinn, you know, uh-huh. whoever your favorite, everybody has their different flair and things that, that mm-hmm. they don't agree with or don't agree with. But I'll ask Holy Spirit. You know, Mm -hmm. just, just help me be more sensitive. Help me to surrender. Help me to yield. Yielding's a Mm -hmm. process. And, and, uh, I love, I know Madeline, you could probably think of sometimes, I love what Jennifer Vez says, because it makes me try to process this more and more every day, how to tell when you're disconnected with him, because we so want to stay to connected. So it's learning some things like Mm -hmm. when you feel like, oh, he's grieving. Like when I missed that word that I, that I had to call back and give a lady, I Mm -hmm. felt the disconnect. Mm -hmm. So you can pray, Lord, help me be more sensitive to the disconnect. You know, did I yell at my spouse? And the Holy Spirit's (laughs) great. Do I need to go repent to my spouse? Or, you know, did I need to encourage my son today? And I didn't. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But learning to see when when you're disconnected. Is there any example? Like, you may feel it different than me, Madeline. That you can give them. It's the same, you know. uh, Amen. Spouse, you know, with your children. I have younger children than you. So sometimes (laughs) you get a little frustrated. Amen. I understand that one. Never can. Or I'm sorry, honey. Can you begin? Just start declaring the patience. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. (laughs) So, you know, I would say marriage and and child. Amen. Raising children will will make you whole. And just co workers. Just loving (laughs) people well. Just Mm -hmm. truly loving people well. Because I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't transform myself. I have no desire to do that. Right. And then that's right. You know? you know, Dave said, you know, he asked the Lord, created me a clean heart. Come you know, on. we don't have the power. Sometimes we try to do Amen. it on our own. No We're way. all guilty of it. But, mm. and, you know, that's, we don't want to be in the place of striving. You know, there's grace. Yeah. And we just, um, yeah. you know, when we learn to get in that place of abiding, you know, that's when yeah. the transformation happens. Amen. And, and if you're on here, like mm-hmm. amen. If you're on here, I just feel led. Put your hand on your heart, and I just, mm-hmm. I just really sense the Holy Spirit, and and just say, say, Lord, I just declare. I just want you to decree this over yourself, so you can do a repeat after me. Say, so, Lord, just I declare every dead place is resurrected. Mm-hmm. So just do that as a prophetic act, and let the Holy Spirit, as He starts showing you over the next couple days, stuff you need to deal with. Know that he just wants to bring wholeness and health to that heart because it's the pure Mm -hmm. heart that sees God. Mm -hmm. It's the pure heart that sees God. So as you just declare that over your heart, sit and cultivate the relationship with the Holy Spirit, things he wants to pluck out of your heart so that you can know him Mm -hmm. and so that you can see him and you can have revelation with him. Whoa. So Mm -hmm. I just declare you're going to have breakthrough in, in the areas that have hindered your relationship with Holy Spirit. And I know, Madeline, I want to honor your time, so I'll get ready to share about your class coming up and where they can follow you. But is there any, I wanted to make sure I honored you with any words of knowledge or any other words you feel like you needed to give out tonight or if you're good. No, I feel, I feel good. I feel like people okay. are hungry. And uh, Amen. Uh, shout out to you guys that have joined, that have come on. Don Trell um, and Monica, Eric, I'll get, love you all. <laughs> Amen. Michelle, Amen. Too, Pessy. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, um, I just, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is um, going to stir up hunger after this mm-hmm. broadcast. So, let us know. Um, just, just over the next few weeks, I'd love to hear some mm-hmm. feedback because sure. it's just exciting that I get to honor him. Like, what honor? I'm so thankful that he wanted me to teach mm-hmm. on him because he, he loves y'all so much mm-hmm. and he wants to be intimate with each one of you. And, you know, not just for the pains and the hurts, but for the transformation process, mm-hmm. you know, apart from him, I can do nothing. Right. You know, so the, the Holy Spirit plays such a role and transformation and I really feel like in the next season in the body of Christ we're going to really start seeing transformation coming out of the woodworks and different it's just going to be across the board it's going to be time for people to be whole so they can carry that glory to the fullness so just start the process tonight like Mm -hmm. I said cultivate the next few weeks and watch how he transforms you from the inside out. Amen. I will say, I, <laughs> it's do, so free. I do feel um, a peace. I just feel it's real. Come on. And so for whoever Come needs on. that tonight, um, yeah. Father, Come I just on. release, Holy Spirit, I just release that peace. Come that on. That you would um, just come as a blanket, mm-hmm. God, that you would just rest, that you would hover, 
um, over your people tonight, God, that you would um, just calm hearts, God, that are um, Amen. that are just been emotional, but having a hard day, Father, that you would just calm. I speak to emotions mm-hmm. to be at peace, the, the storms and minds, Father. I just release mm-hmm. your peace over them, yes, God, that Father. they would just even just blanket them, Father. They would just feel it, um, just that that weight of your presence, Father. God, I just yeah, release Lord. that. Right now, Amen. God, that you would now that you just begin to feel the tangible presence of the Lord mm. over your mind, over your heart, right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Because, you know, peace is a weapon of warfare. Come on, it so is. Mm-hmm. It really so is. So just be at peace. Whenever, um, you know, we have, a, we have a choice, but we allow to trouble mm. our heart. And I'm preaching Come to myself. <laughs> Come but on. But don't allow, it's true. because, you know, what governs Amen. you on the inside will govern you on the outside, mm. will govern your outside. So just allow his peace. Yeah, just to permeate your heart, your mind, your soul, yeah. your spirit. Amen. And just, Lord, I just bless their hunger mm-hmm. as we get ready to end this broadcast. I bless their hunger. And, Lord, I just bless the revelation of Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Lord, I just ask that you, Holy Spirit, you make yourself real to them as, as they make a choice to sacrifice time for you, to ask mm-hmm. you to make yourself real to them, and just to listen to what you have to say. I bless their their mm-hmm. secret place, their quiet time, whatever language or tribe that you're in. Mm-hmm. I just bless it in Jesus' name. But I mm-hmm. want to share, Madeline, where can everybody, some people are logging in and last few minutes, where can they follow you at and watch the replay and <laughs> yes. uh, follow Madeline? What's uh, your um, um, Facebook, Madeline James, or ministry okay. pages, Nobby's Pen by Prophet MJ. Podcast um, right now is on the Anchor app or Spotify under Nobby's Keys. It should be coming out on iTunes hopefully soon. Uh, Yay. Instagram, I just changed Yay. my name to Prophet underscore MJ. So just kind of come on. Um, I Amen. think that's it. And your Facebook books, website. where can they get your books? Books um, you can get on Amazon. Um, just look up uh, under my name, uh, Declaring Your Morning, uh, Prophetic Protocol, Rooted in Love. And then a merger with Amen. my apostles under his name, Jonathan Stidham. Amen. And then I have a new website coming out soon. So Yay. be on the lookout for that. Um, but Amen. Right now, What's but the... right now it's nobbyspen.com, but I'll, I'll have Nobby's a new one here in the next okay. week or so, hopefully. And what's your new one going to be? Uh, ProfitMJ.com. Okay. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And she's mm-hmm. an itinerant prophet. Yeah, so, so I'm sure she'll be you want to invite me? Or <laughs> yeah. Amen. Send me a message. So. Amen. Well, I'm so honored to have you on here, Madeline, and mm-hmm. just, you know, just to get to interview, even as, as friends, I'm just so mm-hmm. thankful what Holy Spirit's doing in your life, and I'm just honored to, to run with you and excited about what God is doing through you in this next season. Amen. So thanks Same for here. coming <laughs> on and running with me and holding mm-hmm. me accountable and loving Amen. me all at the same time. <laughs> Prophecy Amen. to run together. That's Amen, right. We right? need each other. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I just uh, want to just, even as we log out tonight, I just feel like this challenge from Holy Spirit. Just take 10 minutes mm-hmm. while you're already sitting here listening to the broadcast. And just, I challenge you to say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to me right now? Right. And just practice. It'll just change practice your life. Listen. You know, it will it really change will. your life. It'll change your life. I mean, even me and Madeline, we, we're, we're trying to grow and, and cultivate it every day. It's a process. Right. You know, you don't become an expert at, at following Holy Spirit. It's a daily choice. Right. You say, Madeline, it's a daily surrender and yield. So Amen. everybody just be blessed. And yes. thank you, Madeline. You're welcome. <laughs> Love you all. Love you. Bye. Bye. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God and ask Him to help you cultivate His presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.